Notts County Talk back with another match preview. As you can see, I'm on my own. Tom's away. He'll be back for the Hartlepool game, the fan chats. I'll be doing the Hartlepool preview on my own on Thursday. That'll be released normal time. This is a day late because I'm just back from being away. So uh, sorry for the delay on the video, guys. Um, I'm going to quickly go over the Chesterfield game before I get into the Woking game tomorrow. So the performance in itself, for me, we controlled possession, but we didn't really do anything with the possession we've had two clear shots which didn't really test the keeper um, I think a few players didn't play very well and for me I know we, we we seem to pick him out a lot but Rose didn't have a very good performance for me on um, Saturday I wouldn't mind seeing booty in for him but that's something I'll move on to later but in terms of defensively you look at the way the goal went in and you see two or three defensive mistakes and it's like we just need to get rid of those mistakes now for me it's getting to the point where that defense has had so long together they should sort of know um, where's where what player is and be, be better organized than they were for, for the goal because for me it was a bit of a sloppy goal to concede it's a counter attack it's against the run of play and it's frustrating to control a game like that and come away with nothing um, but yeah that that's my thoughts on the Chesterfield game anyway Moving on to, to tomorrow night's game, it's at the Kingfield Stadium in Woking. It's a 7.45 kickoff, as all the Tuesday night games are. It's a decent travel for the travelling fans. It's, it's about 140, 150 miles. So you're looking at about two, two hours, 45, three hour drive, which is, is, is good going, which seems to be the case for a lot of the games this season so far. So uh, yeah, moving on to current league standings though, similar positions, not so eighth with 27 points, Woking are sixth with 28 points um, Woking haven't had a win in 12 games whereas Knotts I think they got their first loss in 6 games so you look at that and it's like two teams because obviously Woking started off very well and Knotts didn't start off too well so we're at different points now with performance wise where Woking are looking to get that win that they've not had in 12 games and Knotts will be looking to get the wheels back on that have fell off on their own beaten run so um we're going into this in the, with the 17th best away record in the league. Now, we can't really say best, but it's just, we're 17th with the away record in the league now. That is worrying, but you're sort of hoping with their recent form, we can go there and take something away from the game. Hopefully all three, but you never know. Um, the last time we met them was 2004. We beat them 2-0, but it's not much going off because obviously that was 15 years ago, so... Moving on to players to watch for Woking. Now I'm going to go straight in with Kane Ferdinand. He's a midfielder. He's got four goals this season. So he's obviously doing well from the midfield position. He's got lots of league experience at uh, Southend and Peterborough. Um, he's actually uh, the cousin to Rio and Anton Ferdinand, which is a cool little fact there. But yeah, definitely a player to watch for, I think. Especially, he scored a great goal last season. A uh, lob goal. It looked like a very good finish out of this league, to be honest. So... Definitely, definitely a player to be watching. Moving on to the striking options. Now they've got Jamal Loza. He's a former Norwich player. He's only got one goal this season, so he's not being prolific this season. But it was in the last game. So he's going to be high on confidence. And he's definitely, for me, going to be looking for his second goal against Knotts. So definitely one to be looking out for. And his strike partner, Jake Hyde. He's got seven goals this season, which is good going at this point this point in the season anyway um but only one of those goals has come in the last seven games which is not massively worrying i don't think he's obviously out of form at the moment maybe he's not getting the service you, you can't really say in, until the day but definitely the highest goal scorer you've got to be looking out for him moving on to knots now so team news we've got o'brien he's back in training but it, it's not full training so he's not doing any contact so he'll just be doing his fitness, so running and uh, key passes. So we'll be doing passes. So not too vigorous on his body because obviously he's got the arm injury, so he doesn't want to make it worse and prolong the uh, time that he's having out. He does have an X-ray in the coming weeks, which will show us where he's at, w if it's healed, and hopefully he'll be back in the squad soon. We look forward to seeing him because I do think we're missing him a little bit at the moment. Uh, other players, we've got Tyson. He's got a cold now. He wasn't training today, so that tells me that he probably won't be in the team tomorrow or on the subs bench. So, for me, it's disappointing because I, uh, I do like Tyson. I like that his style of play where he just is high pressure all the time. He's just so energetic. And when we signed him, I was initially very excited because I think he does have a lot of unfinished business at Knotts. 
But yeah, moving on to uh, Rawlinson, who's obviously out to against Chesterfield at the weekend with a calf strain. He's back in training and he's back in back in the lineup tomorrow for me. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll move on to the lineup now anyway. Um, slow coming goal every, every time. You can't really change it for me. Right back, I've gone for Brindley. Now for me, it's a tough position right back. Not as hard as left back, but we'll move on to that in a minute. With Kelly Evans, he's a good player, and I do. It does. It's sad to see him on the bench because he's young. He's a developing player, but I think that's just the nature of this team, where we've got players fighting for the p position. Anyone's gonna take your shirt, you know. But I do think that's working to our advantage. So yeah, Brindley for me at right back, centre back, uh, Turner and Rawlinson. They work well together. They've got a bit of a partnership going on for me at the moment. They seem to know where each other are without looking and it's positive to have that solid defense for me at the back and i do think he was missed against chesterfield now left back this is a really tough decision for me it could have gone either way but back yoga just gets that edge because he was he was a key he's been a key player in the last couple of games of hardy he, he's very creative on the left um, he does make that bit more space for the the players further up the pitch um yeah so moving on to right mid I've actually gone for Osborne for for that for the reason that I just think he's that little bit more creative. He's a bit more daring because he's young, and I do think we need that. We'd like that against Chesterfield. I think I've gone for a bit more of a creative team, which we'll see in the moment. And he is one of the players that I've put into change. Now in the middle, I've gone for Doyle and Booty for the reason that I just said. Booty creates a little bit more. He picks out good passes. He's both footed. He's got a good shot on him, as we saw in that free kick that he scored earlier on in the season Doyle for me well, he's the captain he, he, he's so good like he drops in I know a lot of people don't seem to like him but he's such a key player for knots and people just don't seem to realise what he's doing like he drops off a lot I realise that and it doesn't work with another sort of holding midfielder for me in Rose because that it's too defensive but if we have like an attacking midfielder and a defensive midfielder working together it works very well and I do think um, Doyle and Booty partner up very well because Doyle makes that that that's extra space for Booty and it does work very well. On the left, I've gone for Shields, another creative player. Um, given the service, he'll he'll like the passes out wide, he'll cross it in. He can seem to get a cross away from nothing and it's something that we need for me, just that extra spark of creativity. Um, striking options. Now I've changed it. Uh, Tom's not going to agree with me on this one, but I'm putting Thomas in over Dennis for the pure reason that I just think Thomas creates that little bit more. He's stronger. He's that little bit quicker. He might like the finish, but I think it's getting to a point now where he feels like he's going to get a goal and he needs a start. Maybe it might help Dennis as well because he has got a few goals off the bench this season. And obviously I'm going to part partner Thomas with Wharton because he, he he's just out of this league for me he's he's just that quality player he had no service against Chesterfield but the balls that he, he did get given you know were stretching him but he still just seems to do something with it and for me he's such a good player like we're lucky to have him for me but yeah that's it for my lineup um let me know if you'd change anyone or you think me leaving Enzo Art is a little bit adverse but yeah going on to predictions uh Tom's gone one nil and he's gone for Enzio, but obviously he doesn't know that my lineup leaves Enzio up. So we'll see what Tom says about that. For me, I think we're going to win 2 0, and I think Boot is going to get one, and I think Thomas is going to get one. But yeah, that wraps up the preview, guys. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think about the lineup and what you think the outcome of the game will be. And thanks for watching.